Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Uh, we got a new project uh, we're going to be doing. We're going to be making ourselves a wrought iron hook. This one right here. We're going to be using several different blacksmithing techniques in the process. So I'm really glad you guys could join us. So uh, stay tuned and we'll get hit some hot metal. Okay, some of the process that we're going to be using is going to be uh, drawing out, center punching, slot punching, Drifting both round and square holes, as well as using uh, the cross peen of our hammer to put some decorative details into the top. Now I went ahead and made a hook already, because I basically wanted to try to see how, you know, this is going to work out. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how much material I was going to need. So that's one of, our, one of the things that's really good to do, ben that will benefit you, is to, you know, sort of sketch out what you want to do and then you know make make actually make go ahead and make the part and see how it's going to look um you know and that way you kind of get a chance to see how the metal's going to move whether or not you know it's it's actually going to work but i'm pretty happy with this first version although as you can see one of the holes right here the top round hole is a little bit off center now you look at the bottom round hole closest to the hook is actually pretty well centered. And so this demonstrates the real importance of taking your time and properly laying out and center punching your holes before you actually go ahead and slot punch and drift. Okay, so some of the tools that we're going to be using for this project are going to be one, a center punch. Two, a swatting punch. Three, a square drift. And four, a round drift. Okay, now we're going to weigh out the uh, center for each hole. So the first hole, we're going to set at 2 inches, and we're going to stop on the top of the hook. And we're going to weigh out the location of the top round hole. Now we set it to 3 inches for the square hole, or the middle hole, or thereabouts. And lastly, for the third hole, or the second round hole, we set it for four inches. So that way, each hole is about one inches on center. So now we're going to find a center. We're using half-inch bar, remember. So we're going to set this for 250 thousandths of an inch. And now we're basically just going to mark the center of each hole. Okay, so now, taking our center punch, as soon as I get a hammer, we're going to very carefully weigh out the center of each hole. Just hit it lightly, it looks pretty good. Of course, I don't have the best light in this shop so it's a little hard for me to see but we'll do our best that's off a little bit so if I can correct it and now for the last hole kind of check everything so it looks so oh, that one's off a little bit 
Let's see if I can't correct that just a tiny bit. There we go. Much better. I like that. Okay. Now we're ready to throw it in the forge, heat it up, and start slot punching it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start slot punching. This is going to take several heats, and the important thing to do is make sure we keep our tools cool. Now these are made out of mild steel, remember, so they will bend pretty easy, so we have to take our time and keep the tool nice and cool. So now we're going to line up with our center line. Tap it lightly, see how it looks. Take your time. Man, that looks nice and center. Keep our tool nice and cool. Now back into the heat. Punch it once. Remove it. Cool it down. Punch it again. Taking our time. Keep the tool nice and cool. Now we've lost our heat, so we're going to throw it back into the forge. Okay, we'll turn her over and straighten her out a bit. Now, I don't know what it is, but there's something satisfying about punching a hole through a piece of steel. For many years, I had to drill. getting ready to get near the bottom and be able to knock our plug out hopefully in this heat we're pretty close to the end bow yep. now we'll knock her over and see our bow's eye straight now now we'll knock this plug through oops a little straighter metal's cooling down, it's going to shear that plug out. Okay, so the first hole we're going to do is the round one. But before we can start drifting, we're going to have to open that slot up a little bit. So I'm going to use this here uh, alignment drift. Just to get it started. So we can get our drift in there. All right. Back into the fire we go. Okay, let's get started and drift our first hole. Go right over our virtual hole. Cool down. We're gonna take another heat. Can we straighten it out? Helps keep the, helps keep the bar nice and flat. Okay, and now it's time to drift the square hole. This we'll have to do over the hardy hole because it's a little bit bigger than the pitcher hole. That's okay. I should have. On that first draw, heat. That's okay. Okay, before we punch it or drift it, we're going to straighten that out a little bit. And now we're going for the final drift.
Now occasionally what I have to do is I have to go in and dress up my drifts a little bit. These uh, again are made out of mild steel. Eventually I'm going to make them out of tool steel and they'll be a lot more durable and give me a lot less trouble. And along with a bolster plate which would make drifting holes a lot easier. Which would provide a lot of support under the piece as you're drifting the hole. But that's in the future. Okay, so I have all three holes drifted. And as you might notice, the uh, center square hole, I decided to orient a little bit different. That's the nice thing about making uh, individual pieces. You can kind of use your imagination and try something new. So now we're uh, going to do a set down and start to forge our hook in. Using half on, half off hammer blows. into the fire. So now we're going to form the hook, so the first thing we're going to do is cool down the tip of the scroll in so we don't bend it. And we're going to work this over the horn. Turn the other way, so keep it even as possible. Okay, so this is where we are right now. So now we're going to form the top end of the hook. And this time I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to draw and tape it out a little bit and give it a little bit of a curl. So let's see how it looks. Object to art. I think art would love it. Okay, 
Okay, so now we're gonna clean the scale off with a wire brush. Use this light duty one to get in the radiuses. I really like to finish it. Give steel after. Forge it. Really cleans it up nice. Okay, now we'll do the other side. So let's take a look, see if we need to make any last second adjustments. I'm going to tap her a little bit flat, I think. Straighten it up just a wee bit more. So I'm gonna put it back in the fire. Now for the final part of the job is to put an oil hot oil finish. It seems it's still a little bit hot, so we we'll want to cool down just a bit. And so when it cools down at the right temperature, you can put a nice hot oil finish on it. it makes it look really nice and protects the surface. is to get it on everything. Now if you were to do something for the outside you'd probably want a different more heavy duty finish but since this is probably going to hang on a wall inside we can go with some more plain old oil. Still a little warm but we'll keep applying heat as she cools down or oil I should say as she loses heat. Really like the way this looks. Looks really nice. I don't know about you guys, but I like a good old wrought iron look. Forged metal. And here you have it. We now have a finished hook. I rather like the way the second one came out. It's a little bit different than the first one, but overall I'm fairly happy with both of them. Okay guys, thanks for coming along. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, anyway, uh, please hit subscribe, uh, hit like, uh, and tell me what you think. And until next time, take care.